What is the link between risk-taking behavior in adolescents and brain development? In this video, you'll hear from Dr. Jess Shatkin as he explains what to do and how to talk with your kid about negative behavior. Hey, it's Clint with Sandstone Care where we help teens, young adults, and their families overcome challenges that come with substance use, addiction, and mental health conditions. All right, let's get right to it. So a lot is going on in adolescence. And the reason I called my book on this topic, Born to be Wild, uh, is not only that it was catchy, but it's also the fact that kids are built by evolution to take these risks. Imagine our species without taking risks. How would we ever survive? If there was no one to eat that mushroom or to eat that animal and to know if it was safe, how would we ever survive? If there was no one to leave the little clan in the cave and go off and have sex with someone else further away, how would we ever have children who are healthy? Because you can't have sex with your sibling. You, we learned a long time ago that doesn't result in healthy babies. So we must have to find new people, new water sources, new nesting places, new farmlands. How do we do that without risk takers? We must have risk takers. So built into our genetic code is risk. And we vary in terms of how much risk we're going to take, but we take risks. And there's all sorts of neurobiological things going on to push us in that way. And they are. The brain is partially mature at 13, 14, 15, but not fully mature. The parts are all there and they're all growing. But the amount of control that the thinking sort of executive CEO of the brain has, what we call the frontal and prefrontal cortex, over the emotional parts of the brain, the limbic center, is limited. So we act more impulsively. And again, for evolutionary purposes, that makes sense. Mother Nature is really happy to throw some thousands of us away every year or millions in order to save the species. Well, some got to die so the species can live on. And that's what Mother Nature has built in. We know that some are going to die because they're going to jump off the bridge to impress their peer because they're going to try that mushroom that turns out to be poisonous. Oh, well. But you know what? Others will see and learn from that. And as a community or as a species, we will survive because no one will eat that mushroom again. So this is, the, this is part of the story. Another part of the story is we have higher levels of dopamine in our brain during adolescence. By this, I mean about 13 to about 25, that period of time than we ever will again. And dopamine people think about as being a reward neurochemical, and it is in a way. What it really is is the promise of reward. It's the possibility of reward. It's not just reward. If you if you like steak and you have a bite of steak, bam, that's your reward. The dopamine stops pretty much after that. You're not continuing to get huge amounts of dopamine. It's dr Dopamine draws you to a behavior so that you've tried a steak, you like the flavor of it, and now every time you smell grilling meat, dopamine goes off. Get me that steak. Every time you walk past the, the meat in the butcher at the grocery store, you're like, ooh, dopamine goes. Get that. That's going to feel good later. And why does dopamine do this? Why does it elevate at such high levels during adolescence for things like food and sex and other pleasurable things? Because that's what's going to allow us to survive. We can't survive without eating. We can't survive without having sex. And, you know, when you talk to a second year old about how, uh, a second grader, I'm sorry, about how a baby is made, and they learn that a penis has to go into a vagina. They're like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? I'm never having a baby. My son was five when he heard that story because my daughter was eight. And so he was around for it. And he said, that's it. I'm adopting at five years of age. What presence of mind? Because what five-year-old would ever think that putting a penis in a vagina makes sense? That makes absolutely no sense. That's something that you have between your legs. You take a bath. You see it sometimes with your sibling. And that's it, man. You don't want anything to do with that. Your pee comes out of there and poop comes out of the other side. And like, that's it. But as you get to be 11, 12, 13, 14, really intriguing stuff. Interesting. Maybe I want to be a part of that kind of thing. And so the whole world changes. And why does it change? Dopamine. We're drawn to make that change because all of a sudden that seems appealing because it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you don't do it. So it feels good. It tastes good. It gives us a warm feeling inside. And so we're drawn to those things. There are a bunch of other things that contribute besides dopamine and the brain development. There's hormones that are running a muck in our brain, things like oxytocin, which allows us to bond, also higher in our brain uh, during adolescence than any other time. So it draws us towards peers to connect to the love hormone we sometimes call oxytocin. You know, you just really link with someone and those levels are really high. So you're really likely to be linked. There are peer effects. We want to impress our peers because the goal at this point of life is to survive. So bond with certain people because you can't do it alone and then also mate. So 
jumping off the bridge into the water seems like a dumb idea. But when you realize that the girls are watching and that your social cachet climbs a little bit if you jump into the water and that those girls are going to now think you're a little more brave, a little more courageous, a little more able to take care of the clan. Well, that increases your value. So you might be willing to make that kind of adjustment. And then there's a lot of pain. Actually, we know that there is a pain of social exclusion. If you are left out of something, your brain feels pain, just like when you get sucked in the in the arm or the face or get into a car accident. The same part of your brain feels pain when you're left out. And so there's a whole bunch of factors. These are all, you know, sort of evolutionary factors that are built into us. Why feel pain? So you don't let yourself feel left out. Because if you know you're going to feel left out, if you don't jump off that bridge into the water, you're going to feel really bad. And although there's a short-term risk that you'll hurt yourself jumping off that bridge, the long-term risk of months and months from now, years from now, at your high school reunion in 10 or 20 years, people saying, you remember that time you didn't drop, jump off the bridge, <laughs> pussy? You know, that that's the kind of stuff that still stays with people and makes them feel bad for so many years. So they won't... Uh, they will avoid that pain by taking the risk. So there's a whole bunch of factors that contribute. And then there's all these behavioral changes, our sleep changes, our you know caffeine use changes, our academic demands change, we start smoking tobacco. All of these things can contribute still further to our likelihood to take risk in a variety of ways we can talk about if you want. And so all of this is basically leading to a huge evolutionary advantage for risk taking for survival for our species but not an advantage for individuals. If you want to learn more about treatment options for you, your teen, or young adult, then tell us about your situation on a confidential call using the number linked up in the description box below, or live chat with us at sandstonecare.com. We'll connect you with the treatment that you need, and if we're not the right fit, we'll get you where you need to go. Be well, and remember that change is possible.